you know, I read things, I'm still studying all the time. It never stops because knowledge is important. But you know, you hear me say, how do we apply and implement this knowledge into our daily day when we're symptomatic, when we're feeling discomfort, when we have the opportunity to practice? So again, the knowledge has to be applied. Here's a great tool. I was reading Dr. Schubiner's book, Unlearn Your Pain, and it is really a fabulous book. I mean, step by step, if all of us took this book and did it step by step, you could be your own doctor, which is what I'm encouraging you to do. <laughs> be your own therapist, be your own doctor. Good point today. If we focus on the pain, then we're fueling it. Then we're giving it attention. So how do we focus on it? be comfortable with it, do PRT, do somatic tracking, invite it in, have coffee with it, get comfortable with it, not fear it, and not have it fuel more pain. So this is where we separate the fear and we understand our relationship with it. So let me read a couple things because I, I just can't say it any better than Schrubiner does. So how do we cut off the fuel to our pain? The more we are preoccupied, the more it has our attention and the more it thrives. When we continuously think about it, worry it, fear about it, worry about it, the more it is reinforced and engraved in the body. So we have to retrain our brain. And this is the key. This is the brain reprocessing therapy. And I'd love to do it with any of you. Uh, let me have a session with you and teach you how to do it. Let it become your response to the pain as opposed to react. So how do we not fuel the pain? How do we focus on it in a loving, compassionate way? Well, we have to tra train ourselves to become less worried, less fearful, less preoccupied. You know, some of us are like, if I focus on it more, it'll go away as opposed to recognize, witness, accept, observe this is part of the mindfulness so we have to breathe we have to become aware we have to sometimes detach sometimes we have to ignore you've all heard me say sometimes we have to say to the brain enough enough brain okay i get you i get that you're protecting me <laughs> you're not punishing me i get you let's have a different relationship this has helped so many people move away from chronic pain and autoimmune symptoms. Sometimes we have to let go. Sometimes we have to let go to have the most control. Think about that. Letting go is a form of control. It's, it's, it's a consciousness. It's like a groundedness. Okay. Sometimes we have to change the channel, change the channel or dial down the pain from 10 to five to three to two. We have to bring safety. We have to see our pain through a lens of safety. We have to understand that we are the ones that are gonna put the fire out. We are the lion tamer. Sometimes we can sing or dance, move around. These are all somatic ways of shifting the focus. If you can become your own cheerleader, your own coach, like, yeah, you can do it. You can do this motivation, go ahead. You can do this, breathe. You can be the best coach. You can take care of yourself. You almost have to, um, you know, continue. And, and this is what I've said in other, other little shorts that I've made is repetition, repetition, repetition. So if I can encourage you to continue on the journey, to continue to repeat. Dr. Schubiner, when you remove the goal of less pain, and you have a greater goal of, I want to be in a safe space. I want to have a healthy relationship with my symptoms. Then you can alter your neuro circuits. When you can practice patience, trust, and compassion for yourself, you can achieve your goals. And I encourage you, and I'm here for you. Have a wonderful day.